Right, I posted this tweet a while ago, uh, and if anyone just wants uh, an idea for like a, a self-perpetuating free bank of content, this is here. Uh, feel free to steal it. I'll do one now. Uh, I might keep doing this depending on uh, how well it works out. Uh, but basically what I was saying was if you go to r slash Street Fighter and you select uh, top uh, this week and then filter by help slash question, then we should get the most recent and relevant questions on uh, r slash street fighter so if you want to create content this is stuff that's got a guaranteed audience uh, and it'll always keep updating itself with things to do so rather than sticking out youtube videos all the time of the things that you know and the things that you want to share this way you're making sure that you're actually providing content that you know people need uh, yeah it's a good little good little exercise uh, as well to see how well you know your own game so uh, we'll just scroll through we'll find like 10 of the, the sort of top ones uh, and see if we can answer some of them. Uh, I'm a Tekken player that's relatively new to Street Fighter. Any tips I plan on being a ROG main? This is much more of a game about taking turns uh, and knowing your frame data. Uh, and the frame data in this game not necessarily always tells the truth in the same way that it does um, in, in other 2D fighters, but more so than in Tekken. So if you're minus four in Tekken, it can still, you can steal your turn back still quite easily in Street Fighter 5 anything from minus 2 uh, unless you really know your ranges and you know the scenario uh, you've got to kind of respect um, that you've lost your turn quite often but yeah this game is about getting to that level uh, and then uh, taking advantage uh, of everyone else being at that level uh, and, and being too afraid to do anything best thing to do take a look at some of the the beginner guides just i uh, don't think that just because you know fighting games you don't need a beginner guide for street fighter 5 it plays even for street fighter players it plays very differently uh, from other street fighter games so it's definitely worth uh, watching some some good tutorials there's loads of good stuff out there Bafile does some good stuff vesper arcade does some good stuff i'll i'll stick a bunch of stuff in the description and i'll reply to this comment as well right here we've got one so i want to get into street fighter 5 but i have a few questions let's click on this one and get a better look from og crispy so i want to get into street fighter 5 but i have a few questions is the online community big how are the servers and how long is the average wait time is there a lot of single player options like arcade or cpu battles are microtransactions a big part of unlocking characters skins etc how do they function i would love help and appreciate any effort to do so stop question one so uh is the online community big how are the servers and how long is the average wait time it's still a really strong community um the game's in one of the best states that it's been in a long time the game's in a really good place right now in terms of uh, how fun the characters are how well balanced it is or how regularly the the community is meeting up there are loads of places to find online games like discords and things like that but actually just sitting waiting for waiting for games using uh waiting for ranked and waiting for casuals uh you will get games within within a minute or two you can sit in practice mode or arcade mode or survival mode while uh, waiting for games so there's loads of opportunities there to do things is there a lot of single player options like arcade or cpu battles not as many as other games not if this isn't a mortal kombat or a, a, some of the more traditional tekken games where there was like loads of different modes that you could do uh it has uh, arcade survival uh, practice mode it's accumulated a decent amount of trials and things like that they're not particularly hard but they're, they're good fun if you do get it make sure that you download the free dlc for story mode if story mode is something that you're interested in it won't appear in the game right now uh, unless you download the dlc it's free but it won't play without that for reasons that, that link all the way back to the the famously uh ugly launch that the game had <laughs> but it's all good now uh, are microtransactions a big part of unlocking characters, skins, etc., and how do they function? They've changed how much fight money I think you get from a lot of the single player stuff now. It used to be quite easy to just go through all of the arcade modes and story modes and things like that and actually get a load uh, of fight money. You still can. You'll still get a good few characters just by actually playing a lot of the single player content and things like that. Uh, it doesn't take too long to, to build up. Uh, a lot of the in-game currency one of the easier things to do right now is either wait for champion edition or just buy the champion edition update which is probably uh, the most value for money at the moment date is like 2,000 pieces of dlc for less than the price of a two-year-old game so it's worth giving that a go if uh, if having the dlc is something you want give the base game a go uh if you don't want the you know and see see what characters you like out of there but there is a lot of variety a lot of things to choose from hope that helped og crispy 
Next one, input trouble. Just a quick question of, is this the case of get good or can I do something? This sounds interesting. Uh, so from some random dude, 821. Uh, just a quick question on if this is a case of get good or can I do something? I'm playing PC Street Fighter 5 with a PlayStation 4 controller and I'm having trouble on Ryu's ninth trial. I'm supposed to do crouch medium punch 623236236P, but I keep doing the super and skipping the DP. I think my DP input might just not be clean enough. I tend to get things like 63236 in the input window, but is there some setting I could adjust or just keep practicing? Actually, on the topic of DP inputs, should I be trying to press each direction and then take my finger off the D pad? I normally try to slide from 6 to 2 to 3. Okay. So let's actually boot up the game and, and take a look at this. Thank you, Kage. Right, so some things to, to think about when it comes to DP. Standard DP would be forward and then down and then down forward. And that should come out nice and easy. Uh, what you can actually do in this game uh, that helps with a few things is you can actually go from down forward to down to down forward again. And it'll just assume uh, that you meant a forward for the first one. Obviously, a down forward input is both down and forward. So in a lot of scenarios, the game will actually pick which one it thinks that you meant to do. So the game will actually look at the down and the forward and it'll make a choice for you on which one it thinks that you meant to input. So when you're going from forward to down to down forward again, it can, it can say with good authority that you were most likely going for that since there's no other thing that you could really have been trying to input there. That same logic will not actually allow you to do uh, the super like that. You've got to actually get the, the super a little bit cleaner just because you have to have uh, a number of inputs uh, in for it to accept the super. That means when you're doing the crouch medium punch, you can see how I'm pressing down and medium punch. You don't necessarily have to do that. You could actually press down and forward in the medium punch and then you can go from that into the heavy punch. So then you've actually got the, the down forward part of the DP which is actually the forward part of the DP, uh, is actually your crouch and medium punch. Now you're doing things much quicker straight off the bat. So you've got your forward and down forward at the tail end of the DP. That can become the start of the quarter circle uh, for the, the critical art. So now all you actually need to do is finish that quarter circle off, do another quarter circle, and then you've got the, uh, then you've got the critical art input there as well. So now all you're actually doing is inputting one fluid motion of down forward and two quarter circles. Uh, and then just pressing the punches at the right time and you'll get everything you want. So you can see there, going from the down forward medium punch, I made two really sloppy quarter circles, hit heavy punch twice in the middle of them and that was enough to come out. So even on a pad, uh, that should come out super easy. It's just a matter of joining up uh, the inputs that you want, seeing if there is uh, an optimal route through them uh, where you're not having to individually put them all in, especially with characters that have DP motions, finding ways to sneak the DP in uh, is, is really important, even though the combo is not calling for it yet. So rather than uh, 2MP, 623 HP, 236, 236 P, we're now saying what you want to be doing is 3MP, 2 3 HP, 6, 2, 3, 6, and then probably HP because you're already on it. Uh, and you're done. So we've gone from having, what's that, 10 directional inputs to only requiring 7 directional inputs. Hope that helps you, some random dude 821. As the title states, I've been playing new challenges off and on for 20 years. I've begun stepping in some of the newer games lately and things look absolutely insane. Insane specials, people flying around, move cancels. Very intimidating for an old head Ryu player. My biggest hang up are these super specials. Let's start with the Senpu Hadouken. Is it essentially double direction input and punch right? Yet I'm only able to get this move off 3 out of 10 times, alpha third strike mostly. Oh, so your idea of a new game is alpha and third strike. Could any of you enlighten me on this issue? I love the series and would like to enjoy some of the newer games as much as I have new challenges. So I'll do this on Street Fighter 5 again just because it's open. So much like I was saying before, you've got two quarter circle inputs like I've just done there. Down, down, forward, forward, down, down, forward, and then forward. There are a bunch of different ways to do this one, but you might as well start with the straightforward one uh, and then much like we were saying before actually work out how to how to get that off other things the only other bit of advice there would be don't think that you have to start uh, inputting that after the completion of another move you can already be inputting the two quarter circles while you're doing the other things uh, 
So you can be inputting that in the middle of another move. Um, like we just were there. There was still loads of recovery left on that heavy punch. And of course to demonstrate there, nothing to do with my sloppy inputs, but we've got uh, <laughs> down forward and then a quarter circle and heavy punch. There's a bunch of different shortcuts where the game will kind of option select uh, and decide for you what you were trying to input. And there it's rightfully guessed that I was aiming for uh, two quarter circles, even though it didn't all come in. So yeah, the games are really forgiven when it comes to uh, a lot of that stuff. More forgiven than other games. In Third Strike, there's a load of we uh, there's a load of crazy inputs that can come from uh, what looks like mash and DPs and things like that will come out as supers and all sorts of stuff, and vice versa. So you might actually get uh, a bunch of DPs when you're aiming for supers and things like that. So you've just got to practice. Uh, the advice I was always given was actually to play King of Fighters 13 and play the trials in that uh, because that's got very little input leniency. So if you can. If you can deal with King of Fighters, you can deal with any game. Third Strike's a good one though because it's got a lot of shortcuts, uh, but it's also got a lot of areas where it actually won't be as lenient as some of these newer games. Uh, so yeah, if you can if you can do it on Third Strike uh, with practice, you can do it in any of them. If you have 30th Anniversary Edition, there is a training mode in there as well, so you don't necessarily have to be practicing all of this stuff in arcade mode or online and things like that. Uh, yeah, more practice uh, by yourself at your own pace, the better. Yeah, after third strike, give, uh, give four and five a go, maybe. You never know. <laughs> How does blocking work in this game? Posted by Squid Fox. I'm god tier trash and trying to find a character I like, but I don't understand how blocking works in Street Fighter. I hold back, but I still get hit during neutral. And I know I'm blocking because I walk backwards if I'm not being hit. Sometimes it straight up refuses to block, and it's not like the enemy is doing low attacks, it's mostly standing attacks. Am I that worthless or is something fucky here? <laughs> so record a dash and then a standing medium kick. And we'll record a dash and crouching medium kick. Like that. Set them both. So the first thing you'll observe is if we're crouch blocking, we will block the crouch medium kick. And we'll also block the standing medium kick. So whereas in certain games like Tekken, uh, you might be better off actually blocking standing most of the time uh, and just holding back um, and reacting to the lows. In this game, it's a lot easier to actually crouch block for the majority of things and react to the jump ins and overheads by then stand blocking. So you can see here, as long as we're actually holding down and back, we're going to be blocking both of these attacks. Now, if we record a dash and then that, you'll now see that if I crouch block, I'm getting hit with that. But that can be blocked standing. So if I switch all of them on, and now just hold crouch block and we just react when the overhead comes the other reason that you might be getting hit is that you're still pushing buttons uh, when you look at the actual frame data of any move there's going to be some startup frames very few active frames and then a disproportionate amount of recovery frames uh, and what this means is that whenever you push a button you spend more time in a counter hittable state than you do in a state where you'll actually be doing anything so it's best to just start by focusing on your defense uh, and just blocking as much as possible not thinking about uh, when you can push buttons and things like that uh, and just see how well your defense goes if you're actually not trying to counter attack at all if, if it's happening a lot uh, just try what i've just shown there basically of just focus on trying to just block with your down backs and reacting to overheads and jump ins um, and from there so long as you're not actually pushing anything those things should be blocking one last thing that's really common that you need to be aware of is the fact that when people do a jump in they often go from their jumping attack into a crouching attack so getting into that habit of stand blocking and then immediately getting back into your crouch blocking as well will really give you some mileage and those kind of inputs are typically the inputs that then become combo starters as well so bear that in mind. From Juicy Thighs, I haven't played much Street Fighter. The first Street Fighter game I've played actually is 5, so I don't know which character to try and learn and any recommendations. Street Fighter 5 is quite simplistic compared to other Street Fighter games, uh, so I wouldn't worry too much about picking the right character. Pick someone who just looks cool, someone that you think is going to be good fun, that kind of matches a personality and things like that that you enjoy. All of the inputs, all of the combos, uh, to an extent are pretty straightforward in this game with very few exceptions so don't worry too much there's no one-way street here i don't feel that in street fighter 5 you can invest too much time in a character and that be time wasted as well a lot of it transfers from character to character because there's a lot of similarities in how these characters play as well 
Uh, so I wouldn't worry too much about that. There is depth to each character, of course, uh, but I wouldn't worry about uh, picking uh, the wrong one. Traditionally in Street Fighter games, people say things like learn Ryu first, uh, and they're a good approximation of what the rest of the game will be like. Uh, I would say that kind of works in this game. Ryu's uh, V-Trigger 1, V-Skill 1, and V-Reversal all demonstrate the V system very well. Um, but I would say that a better character for actually understanding all of the different things that happen in the game is probably someone like Nikali. Nikali was obviously designed for Street Fighter V uh, from the ground up, so he is very much a Street Fighter V character uh, and has a, a decent move set that covers a lot of the things that Street Fighter V is all about as well. He also has a game plan with V-Trigger 1 and V-Skill 1 that complements Street Fighter V and the V system. Um, so as much as it's not the most popular combination of the of the V-Triggers and V-Skills, it is a way of actually understanding what you're trying to do in Street Fighter V, which is to build V-Gage uh, and have a very strong closeout to uh, your rounds or your games. Closeouts in a round tend to come from a good utilisation of the V-Meter rather than uh, just the EX meter. So yeah, I'd say Nikali actually is a, a good, good place to start um, if you want to learn everything, but you don't have to pick a tutorial character in this game. Uh, go for whoever you think looks coolest. Alright, hope that helps Juicy Thighs from Heyo Launch. Hi, I don't know how to begin, I'm looking for help. Unsure about character to pick, combo learning, training, any useful tips and tricks to the game are highly appreciated. While it's also my first arcade stick, maybe point me to some YouTube channels or so. Thank you all very much in advance and sorry for my English. Pretty good English, better than, better than a Geordie like me. <laughs> So the Reddit that you're actually on is a really good starting place. If you uh, just go to the main menu here and click on resources at the top, you will actually find a bunch of stuff here that explains Street Fighter V really well. You see here we've got everything you need to know about Street Fighter V Champion Edition. We've got some really good resources here in things like Sonic Hurricane, FTSE Handbook, Juice Box's Guide to FTSE. We use uh, Bison and Kami in Street Fighter IV uh, to cover that one. but. Uh, it, it explains Street Fighter V uh, and Footsies in much the same way. Geef's Gym. Geef's Gym is a fantastic place to look as well. Not only does Geef's Gym give you a good introduction to the game, it actually gives you some good uh, things to practice in practice mode. Uh, dummy setups and things like that so you can actually learn some of the mechanics and ways of practice and your execution as well. Um, but yeah, uh, give that a go. Start there. Question. Is it still worth getting Street Fighter V in 2020? Bye. I love you so, so much. Okay. <laughs> I play a lot of Street Fighter 4 Cracked and I'm in love with the game. I wanted to play it online and I thought Street Fighter 4 online would be dead if I got it on Steam. Is it worth getting Street Fighter 5 on Steam? Is there a huge difference between Street Fighter 4 and 5? Where do I start? So yeah, loads of differences between Street Fighter 4 and 5. Uh, there's a kind of a debate about uh, what uh, what is and isn't a Street Fighter game. People will say things like Street Fighter 5 isn't a Street Fighter game uh, in, in how it mechanically works. No two Street Fighter games have ever really been the same. They all are quite unique. They all have their own systems, they all have their own mechanics, they all have their own uh, benefits. They all actually reward different styles of play from being quite rushy and aggressive games to being quite reserved games that rely on footsies and things like that. Every single Street Fighter numbered title deals with that differently. Uh, I would, however, definitely recommend uh, not playing the cracked version and paying, <laughs> and paying for a version of Street Fighter if you want to, uh, if you want to enjoy the game uh, to its fullest. But yeah, uh, if, if you want to play a new up-to-date game that's got loads of characters and things like that, Street Fighter V is definitely a place to look. It's still, yeah, it's the, the game right now is in a really good place. Um, really popular online, really good characters. Uh, yeah, give it a shot. Uh, and it's not that expensive online either. So yeah, don't bother with a cracked version of it. <laughs> Actually pay for the game, please, uh, and, and support these people. They need to know that they're doing a good job at the moment, and the only way they can see that is through the metrics of people playing the game and buying the game. So please do, uh, do get involved. Uh, so consider going into your pocket for that one. Bison, Double Knee Press and Psycho Blast. Greetings fellas, so basically I've been playing Bison a lot lately and I still can't wrap my head around how to perform the two moves mentioned in the title without charging them. I'm usually playing V2, could that be the case? Because I see most Bisons performing these two without charging backwards and that way I actually comboing them quite well with other moves. Although when I tried to figure this out once, I sometimes managed to pull the Double Knee Press by going down plus left to right and kick. Is that the trick? Thanks a bunch. So let's pick Bison. So, charge characters. This is something that I like. <laughs> I 
So regardless of the V skill or V trigger, uh, the charge inputs should still be possible in combos and, and all of the rest of it. One of the most important things is actually understanding how to store charged moves early in combos. Uh, and also as early as possible when playing in neutral and things like that as well. So actually when you're doing things like jump-ins, you're immediately holding down back uh, straight afterwards there. So if you, look, uh, if you look at the input display on the left-hand side, you can see I'm actually immediately holding down back as I press up. So because I'm already charging, I've already been able to uh, uh, store something. And after one hit, I'm already able to actually land a charge attack there, you see. And the same goes for scissor attacks. Sometimes you might have to delay uh, some of the inputs that you're doing when you're doing like your crouching attacks and things like that to afford you uh, as much time as possible to squeeze a charge attack in. That's really important for characters like Chun-Li and people like that. But Bison generally that stuff should just be able to, to work. The other really important thing to notice is if I do a charge attack, I'm immediately charging again straight after I've executed it. So if you're doing Purple Hand, you're immediately charging back again. And you can see there on the left hand side, even though it's super messy, what I'm actually doing is holding down back, executing the charge, and then I'm bringing the stick straight back into down back again, ready to do another charge. One of the best characters to work out charge things with is actually Guile. With Guile's projectile being a charge attack, it's actually super important that he's got uh, his charge stored and ready for the next boom as soon as the last one's uh, landed. Obviously only one can be on the screen at any one time, but as soon as that one's landed, you want to be able to get the next one out. So uh, a good character to practice charge attacks with will be Guile. So once that boom's landed, I need to have the next one ready and stocked. And the other nice thing with Guile is, with Guile you can actually practice how efficient your charge stores are. So with Guile, if I don't charge for long enough, you'll actually see uh, a back fist come out there for example so it's very very obvious when that timing is incorrect uh, so yeah to answer your question try to hold down and back whenever you are doing a charge whether it's for a down up charge or a backwards forwards charge because you want to have both uh, you, you want to have as many charges stocked as possible at any one time practice with characters like Guile so you can actually get used to optimizing uh, charge times and understand how long like, those charge times are although they do vary from character to character in Street Fighter 5 bear in mind that the strength of each charge attack could vary as well so there might be some more leniency on a medium kick charge attack versus a light kick charge attack or vice versa uh, and the same goes for EXs as well chun Li's a, a well-known one where uh, if you don't charge for long enough with EX spin and bird kick you'll actually get a regular spin and bird kick um, and those two moves serve completely different purposes so you really don't want to get that wrong so understand the correct timing for your particular character too so there we go i think that was uh, 10 or so questions from the top of r slash street fighter hopefully that's been helpful i'll drop a bunch of links in the description for this as well to, to all of the different things that i've mentioned in there um, and yeah like i said feel free to steal this format uh, if you want as well it's a really good self-perpetuating uh, form of content ideas uh, that you can just do uh, off the bat so yeah Thanks for, thanks for watching. If these are popular, I'll keep doing them. Um, and yeah, maybe see you next week. If not, follow my Twitter and all the rest of it. Uh, things happen on Wednesdays generally. Thanks, of course, to r slash Street Fighter for hosting an amazing place to actually field questions and answer questions uh, and develop new and existing players uh, in Street Fighter V as well. Um, couldn't, couldn't do something like this without them. Uh, so yeah, hopefully. Uh, and yeah, I'll screen these again in another week or so.